with scrapbooking for mortals. This is tutorial number three. We're going to be talking about modeling paste today. So a few things that you'll need for this tutorial. Of course, if you've got some modeling paste or some texture paste hanging out, go ahead and grab those things. And we'll talk about that more specifically here in a minute. Um, you also want to grab something to protect your work surface as well as a few pieces of paper, whether it be some extras that you have in your stash um, or some scraps that you have, as well as some sort of applicator that you can use with the modeling paste. And then I have a few other things that are laying out here, some different techniques I'm gonna show you. So if you have a stencil or a mask, grab that. And if you have some gelatos, acrylics, mist, glitter, um, if you want to grab a few of those things, you can, but you can certainly wait when I get into that part of the video to grab those things as well. Now, you don't need any of this here in order to do this tutorial. You can certainly just sit back and relax with a snack and a drink and watch, or you can play along. So if you're going to play along, go ahead and grab all of those things. Of course, you can stop and go back at any part in this tutorial so you can catch up and play a little bit. So we'll talk about modeling pace, what it is, how it's used. And then I'll demonstrate kind of in general how you use modeling paste and then I'll show you some different techniques of mixed media products that you can use with your modeling paste to really give some appeal, some layer and some texture to your layouts. So with that, let's get started. Like with the other mixed media tutorial, we're going to go ahead and prep our workspace. So I laid down a mat that you can use specifically for mixed media. I had my Heidi Swap mat in the last video. This one's by Ranger and it's sort of a... Oh, I don't know what this material is. The word escapes me now. <laughs> but it's sort of glossy, um, very smooth, and so you can work with mixed media on it and it just wipes up very, very quickly. You also wanna grab some paper towels um, or some baby wipes if you have them for easy cleanup. And then I also, I don't know if I mentioned this in the intro, you wanna get some sort of um, applicators of some type. Um, God, what are these called? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, the word that comes to my mind is scoops, but that's not what these are called. Um, some type of tool that you're able to scoop out your product and put it on your papers with. Okay, and then of course, don't forget your paper, and we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's first talk about general application of modeling paste or your texture paste. There's really no right or wrong way of doing this. You do want to have some sort of applicator or spatula to... Um, to smear the paste on your page or whatever project that you're doing. And they come in a variety of different styles and sizes and they're all used for different reasons, I guess. I'm not that much of an artist, so I don't know. So <laughs> I just use whatever I can get that product on uh, on with. You can also use a credit card. You could use a, or an old credit card. Don't use your current credit card. Um, you can use a gift card, those types of things to add um, some of this product on here with. So. One of the most common ways that we see mixed media or this particular mixed media product used in scrapbooking is with masks. And so I'm going to use this Tim Holtz mask. It's called Harlequin. It's one of my favorite masks. I'm going to pop that out. And I'm using some gray, I'm going to start with gray texture cardstock because of course this comes in white and I'll show you some ways in which you can tint it here in a minute. But you simply just position your mask where you want it on the page. Like with misting, you do want to be mindful of where on your page you want your photo. Because again, you don't want to do all this really cool mixed media work and then you cover it up with your photo, photo layers and embellishments. In my last video when I talk about mist, I typically like to add my textured paste or my uh, texture paste or my modeling paste in three areas and three clusters. And so I want it, of course, by the photo, somewhere on top of the photo, somewhere below the photo. Of course, you can add it however you want to, depending on the design that you're working on on your page. Um, as I mentioned, this product comes in white and um, you can certainly tint it to different colors and I'll show you some ways in which you can do that here in just a second. So general application, you take your mask, and you can use some washi tape to hold your mask in place if you want to. It's totally up to you. And then you're going to take some of your product. And what you want to do is in between using your product, you do want to close it because you don't want it to dry out. You're going to take your product and you simply just smear it on your mask. And you can do this all over your mask. You can, only, you can do it on some parts of your mask, depending on what kind of design you want. And what I like to do... So I got more than what I'll use there. Any extras I want to put right back into the jar, close that up. And I'm just going to sweep that across my page. I'm going to come through and scrape up some of this extra. And then you lift up your, uh-oh, 
you lift up your mask, and then you have the design on your page. You can certainly layer different types of masks. This one is called burlap, and you can tell I've used this a lot. And I'm just going to lay that over that first mask design. Now, you do want to wait for it to dry a bit before you start layering other mixed media products on it. Or maybe you want to put a different design of a mask on there. And again, I'm just sweeping that product across the mask. And there you go. It's really that simple. Some of you have probably had this stuff sitting in your, in your crafting supplies for the longest time and just didn't want to get out and try it. It's really that simple. And then what I like to do is just kind of hover my photo to see if that's where I like it. And that way I know where I want to place my photo at. Of course, you want to let this dry before you add your photo on there. Now you can certainly add some interest to this texture paste by tinting it. So I'm going to show you some ways in which you can do that. So this is a general application of that modeling paste. Once you get done with it, I do suggest that you have some type of wipes or something hanging out. I just grab these little cheapy wipes from Target. Have these hanging out so you can clean off your applicator and your, um, your texture tool. So whether you're using a mask or some other tool to go ahead and clean it off because this will dry and it is a pain in the you know what to try to clean your tools when this stuff dries. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we will talk about how you can add some color and interest to your modeling paste. Okay, so let's talk about some ways in which you can add a bit of color and interest to your texture paste. And the first way we're going to do that is using mist. And with the modeling and the texture paste, you can use different types of medium to add some interest to this and add a little bit of color. And you can definitely tailor it to the color story of your scrapbook page. So you simply, and this is where your mat comes in handy, all you have to do is just add some of this product to your mat. And I'm going to add a bit of this sweet cherry from Heidi Swap directly to my paste. I'm just going to let that drip on there. You can add it however you want to. This little spray bottle for some reason decided not to work today. You can spray it on here, drip it on here, pour a little bit on here, it doesn't matter. Okay. And then I'm going to mix that up. And it'll take on the color of my mist. Now, when you're tinting your texture paste, this is just another way in which you can use your various mixed media products and add a bit of customization to your to your layout. Now, this um, the stress ink is quite liquid, so it will thin out your modeling paste if you put a whole bunch on it. So I'm going to be mindful of that. So I am going to just continue to mix that up and that's kind of what that white modeling paste is giving me sort of a fuchsia color, which is pretty. Okay, and you add as much or as little as you want. I'm going to scoop that up a bit, so I want to use as much of that as I can. And let's go back to our Harlequin um, mask. Now, of course, you don't have to use a mask. You can use some other tool for texture, but I think masks are popular, so that's what I'm getting used throughout the video. And I'm going to sweep that on my mask. And you can add as little as much as you want. And there we go. So you can definitely do a more customized look to your layout by tinting it. That's really pretty. So what are some other products that you can use to tint with? Let me go ahead and wipe this little spatula off. And I'm also going to wipe my mask off as well. And your mask, depending on the product, might get stained, but hey, that's okay. Because the idea is that we're going to be using these things over and over and over again, getting a lot of value out of the tools that we already have. And the cool thing about using masks or using other types of texture tools on a scrapbook page is you can certainly create a more customized scrapbooking page. It'll save you money, particularly if you like patterns and stuff. 
and you can use some of this textured paste here to add a lot of um, depth to your page. Depth. <laughs> DH. Um, to your page and certainly some really pretty texture. All right, so we've cleaned off our tools. Now, another way that you can add a bit of tint is with acrylic paint. Now, the texture paste or a modeling paste has an acrylic base, it's an acrylic based product, so it definitely mixes well with acrylic paint. So I'm gonna add some texture paste onto my work surface here. Again, we're protecting our work surface. And then I've got this little acrylic paint from Fine Touch. It comes in a set of like 20 or something like that. Um, you don't have to go out and buy expensive acrylic paint to do this. Just buy some beginner grade, grade paint. And I just simply added that to my product. And now I'm going to mix it up. And that color is called Cobalt Blue. I'm saying it's looks. I was trying to remember what it was called. <laughs> okay. So again, taking on the color like with our um, mist, taking on the color of this acrylic paint, and that's really pretty. I'm gonna take my Harlequin pattern here. And you can certainly layer colors and layer patterns using this technique, so that's really, that'd be really fun. I'm just gonna add that on here. Again, being mindful of your photo placement, because you're gonna do all this beautiful mixed media work and you don't wanna cover it up in its entirety. And you can use a thin spatula, a wide spatula like this, depending on the effect that you want to get or how much coverage you want. All right. There you go. So that's using acrylic paint. So again, very pretty. That kind of came out to look a bit more purple than it did blue, but that's okay. You can add as much as that of that acrylic paint as you want. Again, cleaning off your tools as you're going along. And I'm just using some really inexpensive baby wipes to do the trick. You don't have to go and buy anything that's gonna break the bank. All right, so let's get that all cleaned off. And dried up. Might wanna have some paper towels hanging around. All righty, another way that you can tint is using some gelatos. So I'm gonna grab a few of my gelatos here. How about we use this blue gelato? Now, gelatos are, um, you've probably seen these on a lot of scrapbooking, on a lot of scrapbooking pages or scrapbookers using this. And this is an, um, an acid-free pigment stick and it glides on really, really soft. And so you can use this in addition to your texture paste to tint. So you can do a couple of different things. You can chop off a bit of this text of this uh, gelato and add it to your texture paste and you will have to mix it pretty um, vigorously or not maybe that's not the word. You'll need to mix it long enough so that um, that little piece that you chopped off sort of melds with that modeling paste. You can also just add it to your mixed media mat or whatever mat surface that you're using. You can certainly do this on an acrylic block if you don't have a mat, that's another option. You don't have to go out and buy a mat just for this. So I'm gonna take some of that product, I'm gonna put that right directly on that gelato that I put on there. Maybe I wanna add just a little bit more. Color my page a bit. And I'm gonna go through and I'm going to meld these two products together. And I like, um, adding that gelato on my page, a sort of cut, or no, on my um, mixed media mat, because then I don't have to mix it as long as if I cut a chunk of it off. So that gives me a pretty light blue there. Let's see if we can add a bit more dark to that. A little bit more. Otherwise you might not see it. There we go. You just want to mix that in. And that takes a little bit longer to do, but that's okay. That's going to come out kind of light, but that's okay. You can add as much or as little as you want. And then you're going to come back with your stencil. Now, if you're doing this layering, you do want to be mindful of drying time. And I'm going to add that onto my page. 
That kind of came out a pretty baby blue. Okay. Lift that up. And there you go. And as you can see, there's, I mean, the color stories are just so pretty on this. So we use the mist, the color shine. Now you can, you don't have to just use the Heidi Swap mist. You can use different type of mist for that. And then we use the acrylic paint and then we used gelatos. So those are three really fun ways that you can tint your texture paste to add a bit more interest to your page. Now when this dries, it'll dry raised. Now this one is more of a, a medium paste and I think my Liquitex is medium. So um, I'm not gonna get this huge large raise in that texture, but I'm gonna get a slight raise in the texture to add a bit of dimension on to my page. And that looks really, really cool once you start adding your photos and your layers and stuff like that. Let me see if I can switch hands. You can add your photo behind that or somewhere and you just have some really cool interest on your, on your scrapbook page. Now, of course, you're not limited to doing this technique on just your scrapbook pages. Try it on your mini albums. Um, Try it on other products that you're doing. Art journals are very, very popular right now, and so you'll see a lot of um, scrappers using um, texture paste on their art journals as well, and tinting that texture paste. So you're not just limited to the white. The sky's the limit, and you can mix different acrylic colors and mix different gelatos and, and that type of thing to get the color that you want. Pretty cool, right? I think it is. Okay, so if you're playing along, go ahead and clean up your space. And what we're going to talk about next is layering the different mixed media products with this modeling paste. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, so let's talk about how we can layer different types of mixed media products and techniques utilizing our texture paste to add a bit more dimension um, and a little bit more bulk to your page. A technique that I do quite often when I'm doing mixed media pages is I'm going to layer not only my modeling paste, but I want to do a bit of stamping as well as use some of my mask and a bit of my mist to add a bit of interest to my page. So essentially what you want to do is you want to build from the bottom up. And I think the way that I want to start out with this layout, this layout is I want to spray a bit of mist on my page. So that'll be a, a layer number one. Now you can start out with stamping if you want to. Um, you can do a lot of different things, but I'm gonna try doing the misting first, or I am gonna do the misting first. So let me actually get a mister that works. Because <laughs> this one may not work. Let me grab um, a color that's a little bit lighter. How about some of this primrose? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some mist and I think what will probably be best, and I didn't have it out when I was preparing. Remember my pizza box from my last video? <laughs> that way I don't mess up my work surface. So I'll put that in here. And before I get ready to do all this really cool mixed media, again, I want to decide where I want my photo at. So maybe I want my photo here in the center. So I'll probably focus my misting somewhere here in the center. Now you'll see me do this technique again when I do the um, demonstration layout at the end of the video. So I'm gonna take my mist. Okay. I'm gonna spritz that on there. And using some more of the techniques that I showed you, I'm gonna go ahead and do some splatters as well. Add some, some more interest. Well, if it'll come out, I mean, come on. Here we go. Doesn't it know I'm trying to do a demonstration? <laughs> and of course, the way that it sprayed out, it went ahead and added some, it kind of sprayed some different splatters on the page too, and that's okay. Again, mixed media is not a perfect science. It doesn't have to be. Let's spray a little bit. See, it's going, it's making those little bubble sprays. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. Now I'm done with that. Now I want to add the next layer. Okay, and then we'll get to that modeling paste. You can see how impactful that looks on the page. So move my box out the way. Okay, so that's layer number one. Now you've already learned how to use mist, so that's pretty simple. 
The next thing I'm going to do, and I will do a separate video on stamping, but this is one way that you can use stamping along with your mixed media. So I'm going to move that to the side. I'm going to take this big stamping block, and it just has different text on it. And I'm going to use my VersaFine. And I want to add a bit of text on the back, but also another added layer of interest. So I'm going to add some ink to this stamp. And I'm going to stamp it various parts of my page. So you already see how cool that looks just by adding the mist. We haven't even gotten to the texture just yet. And maybe I'll do it over here. Again, this is not a perfect science, okay? Um, using mixed media, it's supposed to look messy. It's not supposed to be linear. There's some beauty in the messy. <laughs> Put that back there. Now I'm ready to add some of my texture paste and I'm going to use my burlap stencil and I think I want to do a bit of texture up here, here, and here at the bottom. So let me start up here. Now I certainly could have tinted my texture paste if I want to. I think for this one since I've got that pink in the back, um, maybe I want to add a little bit of color, maybe I don't. And you know what I think I am just a, well no, no I'm not. I'm just going to use the white on there for now. So I'm going to apply my texture paste and there's no, again, no perfect science. You just add it to the spots where you think will add some visual interest. And I'm going to apply it over here. Maybe I should attend to that. I'm not sure if you can see it. You probably can see it. Things look different when you're actually filming <laughs> on your preview screen then it will show up and it will appear on the actual video. And then I'm going to add a bit of texture right here. Down here. Okay. And then that way when I bring my photo back, that gives a lot of visual interest. And you, again, you want to be mindful of photo placement. You also want to be mindful of where you want to journal, <laughs> too, because it's hard to journal over these raised textures. All right, so that's an example, let me move that out the way, of how you can layer your different mixed media products. Pretty much everyone has stamps of some kind. And I do recommend getting some of these larger stamps, particularly to create your own background, because guess how much money you can save just creating your own background using these techniques? So the first thing I did was I sprayed with Submist. Then I added another layer of stamping, and then I added another layer of that texture paste. And you see how much character it adds to that paste, I mean to the page. And again, really mindful of where I would want to put my photo. Maybe I want it there. If I was doing this, going to scrap up this layout, or this photo. Maybe I'd want it right here, in the middle. There are a variety of different techniques that you can use, just using stuff simply around your home or around your craft desk that you can use to add interest to modeling paste. Um, we all have washi tape, so washi tape can be used to create different patterns. So let's check that out. So I'm going to take some washi tape just to do some really simple, a simple, simple pattern just to demonstrate. So then I'm going to take my textured paste and I'm going to adhere that on here, adhere it, I'm going to apply it. <laughs> Again, you don't have to go out and spend money on any of this other than the texture paste itself. Apply that straight to my paper. Now, you can certainly do this on um, other projects as well, not just paper projects. Put my lid on there. And now, I'm just simply going to come up and remove my washi tape. I created small boxes. Now you can certainly go and get stencils that do this, but hey, why not use washi tape? Can you imagine repeating that pattern across the page and how much interest that would bring? Look at that. 
Pretty cool, right? So you can essentially make any type of pattern using washi tape. Large washi tape, small washi tape, the sky's the limit on that. Another thing you can do if you want something that's um, a little bit fun and whimsical, let's add some texture paste on there on your page or your project. And you can take a sponge. Now I've clipped some of this sponge. I'm going to clip some of this off. And you can literally just take a sponge and dab it on your texture paste. And that gives it a pretty cool look as well. You can put that in clusters across your page. So that's one technique and you just keep dabbing and dabbing and dabbing. And that'll dry and that'll give you some really awesome texture. How about taking some of your texture paste and wipe that on there. And we all have some tool that has a pointy edge in our arsenal. I'm just going to use this little Sizzix tool. And you can essentially just scrape it across your texture paste to create a design of your own. And when that dries, it'll look pretty darn cool. There you go. Another way that you can use that texture paste. You can add um, more geometric designs. Some of you are probably thinking, looking around your scrapbook room right now, looking for tools that you can use to texturize with. Maybe I want to do some geometric lines across my page or on certain aspects of my page. So, or whatever project that you're working on. Oh, that's not baby light. That's washi tape. Clean that off. So there's another way you can add a bit of texture there. So all I simply done was found some different things that I already had. Oh, <laughs> washi tape. Where my over here is washi tape. Different things that I already had in my stash to create some texture on my texture paste. It's really not that hard. You don't have to spend any extra money other than what you pay for that texture paste. You can certainly make your own texture paste. There's a lot of YouTube videos and stuff out there. But again, I, I tend to like to buy the stuff that's on the market. But you can create all this interesting texture. And when it dries, it adds a lot of height to your page and a lot more dimension to your page. And you can design any type of background that you want. And so you're maximizing the product and saving some money on the things that you buy by creating your own your own textured backgrounds. So you're probably thinking to yourself, can I do this? Yes, yes, you can totally, totally do this. And in fact, if you've been playing along, you have been doing it. You've already taken the first step. All right, so I'm gonna get this all cleaned up and then I'm going to make a layout using um, texture paste and a few other little techniques that I showed you today. So I'll be right back. Okay, so now I am going to make a layout using um, some Heidi Swap papers and embellishments. So everything I'm going to use on this layout is from Heidi Swap, including the mist. And the picture that I'm going to scrapbook is this photo of me and my mom. And this is a photo I've been wanting to scrapbook for quite a while. And the idea that I have in mind for this layout is to position the photo somewhere here on my page. And I'm going to do some mixed media that's going to kind of come down and towards the side here in an L to cradle the photo. And then I'm going to do some mixed media up here as well. And my title's gonna go down here, which is gonna be called Lovely Smile because I just love my mama's smile. Who doesn't love their mama's smile? Alrighty, so I'm gonna go ahead and prep my paper. Now, the Heidi Swap paper pack that I got is actually pretty thin, this, this particular paper, and I think it came in one of those kit bundles that I got at, like at Michael's or something like that. So I'm gonna take my adhesive and I'm going to use just some cardstock paper. Let me set this to the side. Is when you work with mixed media, it's very liquidy and wet, depending on what it is that you're using. And this paper will get pretty warped in certain sections once I am done putting all the stuff down on the paper. So. That is the mist that I'm going to use, and of course the modeling paste, which is what this tutorial is about. 
I'm going to go ahead and get that backed up and then I'll be ready to put some product on it. I'm getting the, the edges real good. There we go. Now, depending on the type of cardstock that you're using for your base, you may not have to do this. But it's never bad to back it on a coordinating piece of cardstock. So let me see if I can get this good. The last time I attempted to do this, it didn't do well. <laughs> the paper got stuck and I had to reposition it and it just didn't go all that great. So let me try it here. Get that lined up. In fact, I'm going to get this lined up and when I come back, we'll get started. All right, so now I've got my paper adhered to that cardstock to add a bit more structure to it. And I'm going to go ahead and start with my mixed media. So let me grab my box, my pizza box here, and stick that in there. And if you notice, this paper has somewhat of a starburst pattern to it. If you can see, it's very faint. And it's perfect for this type of um, technique that I'm doing. And I think that I want to stick with my burlap stencil, but we'll see. I'm going to use two colors. I'm going to use Till. And then I'm also going to use this Butter by Heidi Swap. So the first color I want to spray is the, is the Butter. I'm going to spray it right over here. In that section. I'm going to spray it here. I'm going to come back with a till. I'm going to do a little bit of. Oh, that's not going to. That's going to be a little bit too dark, I think. I think with the till, I'm going to come back and do some splatters over here. I think that's what I'll do here. I don't think that's going to spray the way that I want it. And that's not even spritzing, that's not even splattering the way that I want it. Let's try it out. Let's see. I'm going to put it over here. Okay. Okay. Sometimes you got to play around a bit get what you want. All right, so I'm gonna bring my photo over. And that looks good. Alrighty. So next up, I wanna add some of my modeling paste to this. And I want a lot of that texture to go here, here, and then right over here. But before I do that, I wanna do some stamping. So I'm gonna grab this little text stamp and to that let's see what color ink do I want do I want black hmm I think I'm gonna do navy blue because I think black might be a little bit harsh so I'm gonna use my Stampin' Up Night of Navy this has been a very fun color for me I'm gonna stamp put a little bit of ink on there Let's start up here because this Heidi Swap um, collection has a lot of navy blue in it. I'm just going to put that here and here and then some over here. So that looks fine to me. Then next up I'm going to put some of my modeling paste and I actually I've had some time between filming the first part of this and the second part I went and picked up some new modeling paste. I have a brand new fresh jar that I'm going to use. <clears throat> so let me get that out. And I'm just applying this on here. really good. Let's get some 
over in this section here. I've got a little visitor with me. Say hi, Corinne. Can you say hi to everybody? Oh, she's being shy. Normally she's not shy, but she's being shy. So I'm going to put my photo back over here. And I think I want to get a little bit over on this section. Mom, what's that kind of blood? This is called modeling beast. Oh, now she talks. Okay. And then I want to get it. Then I want to get it right over here as well. There we go. So I have that all prepped. And what I'm gonna do is take my heat gun because the type of modeling paste that I got is a slow drying modeling paste. It's a little bit thinner. It's called flexible modeling paste. And it's a gel medium. <clears throat> so it's a little bit thinner, but that's okay. It's still gonna give us the same effect. And so I'm gonna dry this up and when I come back, we'll start putting the layout together. All right, and so now I've got everything all dried up and we're good to go. Okay, go ahead and say hello, Corinne. Hello. <laughs> there we go, all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and position my photo. And as I mentioned before, when I use mixed media on a layout, I wanna be able to see all that beautiful mixed media, and I certainly do. I see all the texture of the modeling paste and all the mist that I did, and it goes really pretty with the photo. So I'm thinking that's kind of how I want it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video so you can watch me get the layout all together and then I'll show you the finished product. And as you can see, even while layering, you can still see a lot of the texturing and the misting that I did. And it just brings so much interest to the layout. Okay, so I'm gonna speed it up and I'll continue to narrate and then I'll slow it down and walk you through the page and we'll be done with this tutorial. Okay, so now I am going to go ahead and build my cluster. Now everything I'm using, and I think I may have mentioned this before, um, everything I'm using on this layout is from Heidi Swap. And um, not only from her scrapbooking collection, but also her planner collection, and that's where those frames come from. Um, I purchased those initially to use in my planner, and then I just decided I didn't have a use for that in my planner, in my Heidi Swap planner, so I'm gonna put it on my page. And now I'm consulting my iPhone, I put this page together before I actually filmed this and so I had to remember where I wanted to put everything and there's that photo of my mom and I and I when I was doing this I remember now I actually have scrapbooked this photo before um, but that's okay I'll scrapbook it again <laughs> this is one of my favorites so I am mounting um, or I mounted the photo on some foam squares and I'm putting a little bit of the foam squares behind that um, pink frame so that it'll stand up a bit and I'm going to add to the top of that the gold frame. And I love clustering using frames and other um, scrapbooking embellishments, not just paper. And that's a good way to use up all those materials. Now I'm going to put a little banner there at the bottom, and I believe that's kind of like an acetate material. And you can barely see it, but it's noticeable on the page, but barely. And... I'm going to start building some clusters and embellishing, so I'm going to add that little pink flower, and I don't normally work with flowers, but I do like that, and that's a chipboard piece that came um, with a set of chip chipboard pieces. I think I purchased most of this stuff at like Hobby Lobby or Michael's. No, it was Michael's, I believe. And also, I'm going to put some butterflies there. And those are really fun to work with. I'm going to put a little bit of the adhesive foam squares on the back so those butterflies are going to stand up. And then I had a Heidi Swap Project Life um, kit. And so the gold pieces that you see, that you're going to see, the star and some others come from that, that little kit. It comes with um, about, I guess, 48 cards or something like that, and plus embellishments. And then I add another butterfly there at the top and a button that has some little uh, beautiful sparkles. And I'm going to do the same there at the, um, well, I do it there on the side of that cluster and then, or on the top of that cluster, and then I'm going to do it on the top left-hand side of the page up top. And let's see, what am I going to do next? I kind of laid out my title. I'm going to reposition the title here in just a moment. 
And now I'm just laying down some other little embellishments. And I decided that frame on the left-hand side is going to need a little something. I believe that's what I'm going to do next. Yep, so I'm going to put a butterfly there with one of those pretty little sparkly buttons. And then I'm going to take um, some die cuts that came with an ephemera pack from Heidi Swap. I just needed a little extra detail to go on um, both sides of that cluster. And this is probably one of the best mixed media layouts that I've done in a while. And I think I might say that again too before the end of the video. Okay, and so I have these pretty bows and I'm challenged to use them on the page. So that doesn't actually get on the page. And then I'm gonna sprinkle some of these little gold elements around the page as well. I went from not liking gold to really loving gold. So I think I'm gonna stick with gold for quite a while. Put a little star up there for some interest, a little circle there by the diamond. Thought I would never use those diamonds, so I'm glad that I did. And then up at the top. And the cool thing about using or doing mixed media work is that just the background itself just does so much for the page where I don't have to add a whole bunch if I don't want to, um, but you certainly can embellish to your heart's content. So I'm gonna reposition that label. I mean the title rather. So lovely smile. And then I'm going to add a little diamond there, chipboard diamond to the left side of that board that says lovely. Then I decide to add some twine. I'm gonna tie that in a bow up at the top. And because I wanted some, I wanted another element of movement on the page and adding ribbon or a bow to something with some tails hanging off definitely achieves that. Now I'm thinking I'm going to do some, oh yes, I go ahead and missed, then I changed my mind because at this point I'm trying to decide if I want to journal on this page. And this is kind of where I have a dilemma because I really love the page and sometimes I think if I put journaling on it, it messes up the page. <laughs> but this is a mixed media page so it doesn't have to be perfect and linear and I just kind of talk about how much I love my mom's smile. I am certainly my mother's daughter. So I take some Tim Holtz Distress Ink and Pumice Stone and I'm going to stamp the date using a Heidi Swap Roller Date stamp. And I'm gonna take that same ink and I'm going to distress around the page here in just a few. Okay, so now I've got that all stamped and there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and distress the edges real good around the page using that same pumice stone. And I'm liking it so far and I think the finishing touch that I'm going to add to that is some mist. Um, and this is Butter by Heidi Swap. Okay, so here's the finished layout. And you know, to be honest with you, I think this is probably one of the best mixed media layouts I've done in a very long time. And the idea, or at least how I perceive mixed media to be, is it's supposed to be messy. It's supposed to have lots of movement on the page. You're supposed to have a lot of different things that just kind of draws the eye in into your page. Okay, so next time you are in your craft and hobby store, go ahead and pick up a jar. Maybe you start with a smaller jar at first before committing to the larger jar because it's gonna be a little bit pricey. Make sure you use your coupons at your local craft store, particularly those of you who are who are um, in the States if you shop at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or AC Moore or some other places um, that offer a discount or offer coupons. Definitely use that on there as you're building your mixed media um, tools. And go ahead and give it a shot. Hey, if it doesn't work, that's okay. Toss it, start all over again. You're not gonna become comfortable with using this medium unless you use it frequently and practice it. So if you have any questions, leave them at the comments, uh, comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial and I think the next tutorial we have um, that's gonna come up is stamping on your scrapbook pages. So I showed you a little bit of that today um, using this mixed media technique with modeling paste, but I'm going to show you how to stamp on your scrapbook pages to add some visual interest. So I got a lot of requests for that. So that is coming. So I see you guys next time. Have a great day.